Hi, everybody. It's Jen Ferguson with Artistic Painting Studio. And yes, it's Friday. I'm so excited, and I hope you are as well. Um, I'm just going to check and make sure that I'm on the right page and that our video is going. And that way you can say hi, and I know who's on here with me. Ah, it looks like we're good to go. So that's awesome. Um, as you join, do me a big favor and say hello. Otherwise, I don't know who's hanging out with me, and I want to know you. So get on here and say hi. Um, I am going to quickly uh, share this link and um, go do a text message really quick. Okay, so forgive me. We're trying to make sure that everybody can see us and, oh, excuse me. Oh, I felt that coming. Um, everybody can find us easily. So we're doing a community text. So if you're in my texting club, I'm texting you the exact link directly to the video. Okay. And now let's get back on Facebook. Oh, did I lose that? Oh, okay. I gotta go search. I guess I clicked off of something instead of, oh, who knows? Who knows what I did? Okay. Yeah, I lost that. <laughs> okay, my navigation skills are not so great this evening. Okay, so let's get on here. Um, yep. That is yesterday's. Okay, let's update. I got the wrong hairdo. My hair was curly yesterday. Today it's straight. Okay, let's make sure that we are home. I just don't know why Facebook has to be so challenging. <laughs> there we go. Oh, just seeing me go, bless, bless you. Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay. I still can't not get to my own page. Okay. This is really bizarre. Okay, let me struggle here for a second. It's Friday afternoon after five o'clock. Of course, we are probably on the brain dead side. And I think I finally got to the video. Um, so let's get this large. Okay, so I can see comments. Hello, Madonna and Desiree, Eduardo. Is it Nilda? I'm not sure if I pronounced that right. Okay, I probably could have just hacked that to death. Sorry. Gloria, Teresa, Terry. Ooh, Gazella. Okay, well, we've got some new names on here. I think I got some new friends. And Teresa. Okay. Um, so after me screwing around here for so long, um, hopefully at least my text message got out. And for those that are in the texting club, um, you should have gotten an alert that took you or gave you the direct link to the video. So we're hoping that helps. So instead of me sending out the text message ahead of time, I'm going to wait till I'm live and that way I can send you the direct link to the video so I'm already on and maybe it'll be easier to find. We'll have to see. Let me know um, if anybody, yep, Desiree said she got it. <gasps> oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I love it when I don't kill somebody's name. Okay, I'm just like, okay, names have never been my best. English has never been my best. Um, so sometimes when I go to pronounce somebody's name, I'm just like, oh my gosh, do I even want to say that? <laughs> But I'm glad I got it right. Woohoo. Okay. So let's see. Madonna says she finally got coats on an epoxy on two tumblers. Okay. Well, if I'm lucky tonight, if I'm lucky tonight, I got my tumbler right here. Okay. So we're going to see. We are going to try to finish some things. And I'm so freaking bummed. I was going to start actually putting... Um, ribbons and bows and twine and jute and I have my staple gun but guess what those are the wrong size staples they will not work they're too thick okay I only got three eighths of an inch I need like quarter of an inch so and I looked I got two boxes of these okay of course wrong size so we're just kind of putting that aside maybe we'll get the drill out and we'll drill some holes and we'll just put some ribbon on that way who knows but we're gonna get started so I'm going to change my camera angle here. I'll let you guys see my table that I'm working on and um, see what we're going to do. Okay, 
So I got things lined up. I got things ready to go. We're going to rock and roll for our Friday night. And oh, excuse me now that I sneeze so nice and big in everybody's face. I have to actually um, grab a Kleenex, okay? Who knows what's around here? Something definitely got into my nose. Okay, I started this a while back. Oh my gosh, doesn't that look gorgeous? Oh, this is so pretty. This is the cobalt blue foil, okay? And that is amazing. Um, Barb, I don't know. I sent my messages out after the video was live, okay? We're trying to just kind of get everybody on board and we've had so many people go, oh my gosh, I don't know how to get onto it because we just sent them to our page. Um, so I tried to send out the alert after I went live so everybody would have a direct link to come join the video. So we're just testing things. Um, but this is the cobalt blue, a foil that was from, I believe, wasn't this in our May collection? I think this was just in our May. It was in one of the last two months. And I have already done my stars. Can you see the stars just faintly around the edge? Okay, as so the light hits them. And I figured since I already have out our new Oh My Stars foil, that I was going to go ahead and just finish foiling these, okay? So I'm just going to go ahead and finish out this rim and try to get this one complete. Oh, wow. Okay, the silver looks amazing on the blue, okay? So if you have not done this combination... You have got to try this, okay? Whether it is something patriotic or not, I think you will love a blue and silver um, combination. Um, so Desiree, did you get my text message? You just didn't get the link? And it was after, after I went live. Um, so after I went live, I sent out the text message. So tell me if the link was not in there because it was supposed to be. I copied and pasted it. But you know, that doesn't always mean anything, okay? <laughs> Hello, Crystal. Isn't this gorgeous? I love, love, love this combination. I think it's just stunning. So even if you're not doing something patriotic, if you went for a, a blue background and come in with... Um, some silver foil, I think you will be highly, highly um, impressed and love it. Okay, love the combination. That is just so pretty. And oh my gosh, the, yeah, the silver just pops. I love, love, love when we get a color combination that just pops everything off and just gives a great combination. Now I finished, oh, I think it's behind me, okay. I already have finished one of these, and I was really hoping for a whole set of four. But at this point, we're going to go for two, okay? <laughs> and just be grateful that we have two done. And most likely, I'm going to use them as centerpieces and not so much as a charger um, for the holidays, okay? And ta-da, ta-da, that is so great. Okay, so I only sent out one text tonight, Desiree, and it was completely after the video went live. So it should have been a direct link to the video, okay? So hopefully it worked for a few people. We'll have to keep checking it out. But, oh my gosh, you guys, look at that. That is so, that's so great, okay? Now I did it the other way. We did the pearl white with the blue. So these are my two plates that I did that I was trying to create something to coordinate together. And I know they're most likely just going to be a centerpiece, um, but I was looking to grab some, uh, my thought was to get a couple of the Dollar Tree um, glass cylinders. And I didn't know if I wanted to get just the Dollar Tree glass or even possibly just get, oh, um, what are they called, like ball? ball jars okay for canning and I thought to get a set of three of these and we could use this for utensils but I'm thinking these are a little tall 
but they could also be candles. I could put napkins. I could put forks and napkin, forks, naps, and spoons, knives, all that kind of stuff. So I thought these would be fun. Whether I have time to dress them up or not, the glass would be pretty and you could just see all the gorgeous colors of all your utensils and just make a cool little um, centerpiece, okay, for everybody to gather. So again, these are just Dollar Tree um, glass tumblers. These are a little shorter than the last ones I had, but I was wanting to kind of find anything a little bit smaller. So I might go shopping again. Who knows? Um, oh, good. So, okay, Diana, <laughs> no problem. I'm glad that you at least did get the link. Okay, that's awesome. Um, Terry says it worked for her. Oh, sweet, sweet, sweet. And Terry, thank you so much for the stars. I so appreciate that. Um, but yeah, it's nice to know that it worked for maybe at least one or two people. But we're just trying to get you guys in here and make it easy on you. And you don't have to go hunting for the live, okay? Um, to finish these off, I'm going to definitely put on my Master Clear Supreme, okay? And we did so much of that last night. I'm not going to bore you to death with... Uh, putting on my top coats, even though I want to get things done. I want to keep moving forward because I was trying to finish a few things off. So I had my twine out. Okay. I grabbed my um, great staple gun and then realized uh, those staples are just too big. They're, my staples are thicker than my wood. Okay. They're thicker than the thickness of this. So there's no way I can use them. Uh, so we're just going to have to go shopping over the weekend and get different size staples. And here I was just going to be like rocking and rolling through some stuff. But this is a project that I did last year. And I made several of these. And I found them around here and thought, okay, girl, we've got to finish this one out. Okay. I'm trying to get this in the screen so you can see the whole thing. Um, but it's a nice big door hanger. Um, the size of this has got to be 18 by 18, approximately, okay? Probably about 18 by 18 at least. Um, and it was at the point where I thought, okay, this is cute, but I feel like I could use some more stars on it. So I did whip out my star stencil again. Okay, I'm totally addicted. You guys know I've got, I've got issues over here, okay? And decided that we could put a few more stars on. And especially on the silver, we need it different color stars. So where did I put? Okay, here's all my, here is all my foils, okay? So I thought we could use some of the red, some of the blue. Okay, these are all glitter stars here that I'm cutting up right now. And this is what I will use on the other colors. Um, we also have our 3D stars. Okay, these are so cool. Let's don't get that stuck. And I also have our brand new, uh, this one's coming out in our June foil. Oops, that one does not want to cut very well or my scissors need to be clean. Um, this one's coming out in our June Foil Club package. Okay, this is our navy blue. And I didn't know if I wanted to incorporate some navy blue or I could also incorporate some cobalt blue. Okay, so we have just got all kinds of colors here. I was ready for a patriotic project when I gathered all this. Okay, and let's see. Okay, I've unrolled everything now. I think this was my pile I took to the river and I did nothing, okay? I always have great ambition and ideas and sometimes I just, just fall a little short on getting everything done I wanted to do. But it was too much fun this weekend. We had too much company. It was crazy. Okay, so I know I love the silver on the blue. Um, so let's do a couple of these. And I got that one started, so I might as well do that one as well. Sometimes you just don't know where all of you have this. But I think I also want to incorporate even a little bit of red, okay? And I think I have 
I don't know. Oh, there's one. Okay, this is like going on a little bit of a hunting game. <laughs> you don't know where all you put these, okay? Not unless you feel for them and see if they're, okay, there's something sticky over there. So yeah, let's go ahead and go red over here just for fun. There we go. I knew there was at least one over there. And I know on here I wanted to use the red, the blue, um, let's see, Dollar Tree. Oh, the plates. Yes, the plates are all from Dollar Tree. Sorry, guys. Um, yes, they always have them in stock. Um, I try to find the, the chargers. Okay, so they're not just plates, they're chargers, okay? Um, so they're meant to go underneath, uh, underneath your regular dining plate. Uh, but I like to use them for centerpieces as well. I think they just come out really super cool. And that's what I did for Easter as well. Um, but you can use them for a lot of different things. But yes, the Dollar Tree always has those in stock. And uh, such a great way to, such a great way to decorate, okay? Okay, we're going to kind of scatter all the colors. We're just going to do all the colors, okay? And I think I put a whole bunch on the red. I think I kind of got carried away on the red, but we'll see. Yes, I'm, I'm looking for them with my hand. I'm just kind of going, okay, so where is the stickiness? If I can't see the little bit of the sheen of the shape, then I just go and look for it by my hand. Okay, and that might have been all I did. I thought I went a little bit crazier than that, but I guess I didn't. Okay, but I feel that our love, okay, our L, V, and E have so much more interest now that they just don't look um, so naked, okay? And again, this was one of those I was going to finish up <laughs> and put the twine on it so we could hang it. But this also needs to be um, clear coated. And we're going to be, again, putting on, I want to see if I can get a better picture. I'm going to, oh, I'm going to flip my camera up a little bit here. Because sometimes when I have my camera up, I can hold things a little bit better so that you can see them well and see how cool that is. Okay, if I hold it back a little bit, you can see the whole thing. So, yes, I'm going to have to wait until I either get my drill out and drill some holes. Or most of the time, I just go ahead and use my staple gun and staple to the back. Uh, but this still needs top coat. Yes, I still need to have another top coating party. Um, and that's why, that's why nothing ever gets finished, okay? Because you just still have another step and still have another step. But we're, go we're going to really work hard on getting this one done, okay? But I think this is such a cool project and so much fun. Um, but that one is done for now. And let me let you see what all I did do, okay? So I tried to come back here a little early. Um, that's always an objective, okay, is to come back here a little early. Let's see, can we get that in there safe? There is a lot of stuff leaning back here. Um, and I did a little gluing. And I know that you've been asking what I used. Here it is. So I found my E6000. Um, and it's been around for a while, okay, so... Uh, it was hard to squeeze out, but it's, it's good. And then I also have been using, um, Aline's fast grab tacky glue and this works really good. Okay. I just like to keep it upside down that I can actually get the glue to the bottom, but we did glue on this one here, which is our land of the free. Okay. So this one's all ready to be hung or to at least drill holes, um, since we can't, we can't staple to the back, okay? And then um, Home of the Brave, okay? This came out as well. So I was so thrilled. Both of these are, I mean, as finished as we can get. Um, it's just the adorning now, okay? And I thought I was going to get to it. But uh, my staple gun is not cooperating. Um, so as I told you, I bought this ribbon, which I thought would be really cool to make a bow and just kind of accent and dress it up. Um, I love all the natural um, stuff. So I've got like a jute um, one also. So if I wanted to even go heavier and 
add something fun like this, okay, and just make it a little chunkier so it gives it more personality. But I have a bunch of these, okay, so we've got what's twine, we have jute, and then I found another one that is same type of kind of material, but not as wide, and this one also has... Um, has the wire in the, the edge okay so that you can really crimp it and have fun with it and make something really cool okay so that's definitely probably the better size to use and it will give us some cool personality and I don't know if I'm going to incorporate uh, the one with the stars on it as well maybe we can make a bow out of that uh, watching Jen make a bow sometimes is pretty hysterical and I said I was going to go watch a video before I did it and I didn't have a chance, so I don't think we're going to be doing any of this right now, okay? Um, but we'll get to these, okay? So they're ready. I mean, these are all top coated and ready to finish off. So I'm totally thrilled that at least we're that far. Um, but again, you know, I thought I was prepared and then I just wasn't. <laughs> or my, my gun wasn't, okay? But I did get these done, okay? So these we can finish up. And I have a whole pile of jute that has come off of, I think, several of these projects. So I thought maybe we'll just go ahead and see if we can just put this back on there and get these ready to go. Because these are going to probably be hung on the wall behind me. Um, I know the word create will be hung on the wall behind me. I'm not sure if home will be. But uh, to get this back through, these are always kind of tricky. I've always found that it's easiest just to kind of tape that edge and get it to where it is just tight. And that way you can thread it back through and then you can just pull the tape off the end and do your little knot, do whatever you need to do. But yes, I am so thrilled. I mean, and this was a simple little project. None of this has to be difficult or challenging or you know, take a lot of time. These are really, really super easy projects, okay? But these were kind of fun because I added the paint pen to them and gave them a little extra personality on their edges, um, which just kind of creates a little bit more interest, but you can keep it as simple as you want or adorn them as much as you would like. Uh, but these are totally three-dimensional because we do have uh, the thickness of the letters, okay? So they are popping off of there. Okay, let me get this one threaded through. And then as all my little projects actually get done, um, we're going to be cleaning off the wall behind me and starting a beautiful background drop or backdrop wall because I'm so tired of seeing a white wall, okay? And if I don't have a white wall, it just seems like the whole area behind me normally gets cluttered quickly. So we're gonna make a beautiful wall with some shelves and uh, put on a bunch of letters that I bought. So my last trip to Hobby Lobby, I bought a whole bunch. Um, I'm not sure that hangs correctly, but that'll work, okay? But I bought a whole bunch of um, letters, spelled out as many words as I could, because I'm telling you, every time you go to Hobby Lobby, they're missing half of the alphabet. So I'm just going to fair warn you, if you're going to Hobby Lobby to, to go and spell any word, be prepared. They're going to be missing half of it. Um, so almost every word I tried to spell, I had to start over again <laughs> and try to spell it again. But at least I found a few things. But um, this one, I am so thrilled with you guys. I mean, how cute and sweet that is. What a great little gift that you can even do as um, like a hostess gift and then put it in one of your stenciled uh, little brown gift bags as well, um, which I'm telling you, there's nobody, none of your friends are going to say they don't like this little fun gift, okay? Um, let's finish off home. And we could do home with something different. I was even thinking... That black would look good on this, but let's just do, let's see, this might be a little too long. That's too long. Let's go for one of the shorter ones, which I'm sure came off, but I'm telling you, their holes are not in the right place. This is hysterical. Should probably re-drill those, but we're not going to. Um, let's see here. 
Oh, so Diana's saying there's an E6000 plus now, better than the regular E6000, has no odor and multiple surfaces at all weather. That, Diana, that is great information. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, so yeah, that's sweet as can be. Okay, we love hearing stuff like that. I have not bought. Um, oh, no, I'm being told to paint my jute. Okay, I can always paint my jute black. Well, that is a great idea. Okay, so I guess why don't we just paint our jute black? And um, we'll do that first. Okay, I don't know if I've ever painted my jute. So what the heck? We'll just take your suggestion and go for this and see what kind of a mess I can make painting my jute black. <laughs> but I don't you think it needs a black ribbon over a jute ribbon? I don't know. This one just kind of felt like the jute worked for it really well. This one I feel like it needs black. So we're going to go for it. And I think I'm just going to do it on my plate. And um, this is a new experience for me. How many of you have actually painted your jute black? I don't know if I would have thought to do that. I would have been looking for black ribbon and trying to find something black around here instead of trying to paint it. But what the heck? Why would I even not think to paint? Because this is interesting, okay? But it's working. So, hey, as always, if you don't have the right color and everything is not perfect, just paint it the color you need it. This is a great idea. So who was that? Um, I'll have to scroll back, okay? Let me get this painted and I'm gonna scroll back because I wanna say big cheers to you for the encouragement of painting my jute black. So even if it's not perfect and there's some of the jute showing, I still think that'll work really well with this whole look. Now, I'm not gonna be able to use this right away <laughs> because it looks like we're gonna to have to dry but um, this is going to work pretty good. I love all the creative minds that hang out with me, okay? Uh, I feel like I've got a great group here on a Friday night. Uh, so anybody have great plans for tonight or for the weekend? Um, I think I'm going to be working. I mean, I was gone all last weekend for fun, fun and games, okay? So I think this weekend we're going to be paying the price, okay? <laughs> Teresa says she's blended foils, but no paint at jute, but I will now. Okay, so yes, yes, we've got a great idea. And Christine is the one that gave us that idea. So big kudos to Christine tonight. Thank you for the absolutely fabulous idea. And uh, look at me, still going on it. Uh, Teresa says she's still working on her new edition. Okay, we're still in the midst of our remodel, but I'm at that point where I need help, um, especially with my messed up ankle. They think my ankle could be a torn ligament, so um, I can't do as much at the house now as I had been doing. Um, so I'm kind of thinking things are going to take a little bit longer um, to get done. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to do an epoxy board since I've got things in stages here. So let's glove up. How many of you have never done epoxy? Give me a raise of hands or just say no epoxy. Okay, where's my cup that I already measured? Okay, I know I did this last night. Oh, there it is. Huh. <laughs> it was too close to me. Too, too close. Okay. Um, and before I do that, okay, um, I want to go ahead because I know every time I mix epoxy up, I always have leftover. So let's see if I can move a few things, make my glitter mess over here on my tray. And um, yeah, that was a good place for that stencil. Yeah, it's flat. And finish this out. So this is one of the fun uh, coasters that I've been doing that I've been putting the glitter into all the nooks and crannies and the crevices and just adding a little bit more interest. But this is kind of what I end up doing with all my leftover epoxy is finishing up my uh, coasters, trivets, whatever you want to call them. And these are just done on travertine tile. 
so this one's been foiled and it's got great pits. Okay, so now I want to go ahead and use some of the our um, ice glass and copper penny and fill those in. So Gloria says she's new to epoxy. Okay, that's awesome. Okay, so we are going to grab some of this out. And basically I like to put the glitter in the areas where it is um, conducive to the foil itself. So if that area of the foil that has the pit is closer to the teal, the patina looking color of the foil, then I'll normally go ahead and put that color there. If it looks like it's more closer to the copper penny, I normally will do that one in those areas, okay? So basically, I'm just kind of rubbing over the foil. I'm going to get rid of all my leftover here, okay? And then I'm going to grab some of the copper penny. And that was kind of a mess, okay? But because I have put a full layer of foil adhesive over these um, tiles, this should stick into those nooks and crannies, okay? Now, it might not stick everywhere, but it's going to definitely add a little bit extra character in those spots. But this is just a kind of a fun thing to add and do. And it doesn't have to be done. It's just another thing you could do if you want it to. If you're a bling girl and you feel like you just need extra bling on your project, then you can add some glitter into those spots, okay? At this time, I'm not going to add that back to the container because it's now mixed in with some of the teal. But at least I have my glitter on there. And once I get ready to do my pour, okay, whatever, um, whatever epoxy I have left, okay, I can just pour over that. Um, okay. <laughs> um, yes, Christine, we do sell the glitter, okay? Um, I'll put some links in here for you when we're done. But yes, the, um, the more of your foil adhesive that you get stuck into those pits, okay, the more of the glitter that will stick in them. So it really works great. But I normally just put the glitter over the openings, okay? So you can even use your hands and kind of make sure they're back into more of the pits if you want it mainly in those areas. And then clear off the rest, and then that'll be just ready for my pour. Um, okay, so epoxy. Now, Gloria, I think, was saying that she she's watching, but she's scared to death of it, okay? It is really not that hard, you guys. And I want to say that the biggest thing is... Um, is just making sure that you do precise measuring, okay? And you want to have precaution. Make sure you're gloved up. If you're in a not well-ventilated area, make sure you're wearing a mask, okay? So do all the preventatives that you need to do. Okay, I gotta put that aside for now. Um, but what I did is, you can take any cup, okay? And because the markings on here don't go any lower than 30 um, cc's, okay, one ounce, I went ahead and put an extra little mark way, way down here because I know that I probably only need about a half an ounce total, so maybe like a quarter um, ounce of each product to, to do a tumbler. It's like a really low number. It's like 12 cc's or something, okay? Um, and I know this is probably still more than I need it, but I felt that was a comfortable level. So I made that mark. I fill the cup up with water to that line, okay? I pour it into this cup. And so on this cup, I made my really bad line here at the bottom that's kind of jagged, okay? Because it's just kind of hard to draw a line when you're going sideways and looking for the watermark. And then again, I filled that cup to that same line again and poured that water in again and made my second bad line. But I know that those are equal amounts and I always want to pour my epoxy together in the same cup. You don't want to pour it into two separate cups and then pour it together because you're never going to have equal measurement at that point. Um, and equal is probably just one of the things that is super 
um, that I just really stress, okay, that when you have your parts mixed equally, you are going to make sure that the product is mixed correctly and that you're not going to end up with any issues with your drying. Okay, so that's what happens is if by chance you get your proportions off, you could just end up with a soft spot in your epoxy or your epoxy just not curing completely right. Okay, we always, um, epoxies, resins, are all these products are always a two-part, okay? There's no one-part epoxy that I'm aware of, or at least I'm just not aware of it if there is something out there. Okay, we always start with part uh, B first and pour this one in. So I'm going to be very careful and very slow that I'm only pouring to that very first line that I marked. We're also going to make sure that that cup is clean, okay? I saw a few extra little goodies down there. So pour slow because it's going to kind of like creep up on you fast, okay? And like I said, we want to try to make sure we're equal parts. And I know there's times I have not been perfect, okay? It's just impossible. But I'm going to try and do my best to be as close as I can. So we pour our... B first, and then you're going to pour your A. And again, I'm looking for my line. And again, go slow. Okay, I always feel like A just goes so much faster. And, oops, yep, it does, it does. So remember, this is just a little bit of product. It's not a lot, okay? And just be patient. Okay, I might have to look from the side on this one to make sure I'm there. I've got shadows, I got all kinds of things going here. Okay, I think I need just a tad, tad more. And that's probably going to be plenty. Okay, I always use my finger, clean off the lid, okay, clean off the, the lid area of the jar and put that back on. It's okay, it's all over my fingers, but I got gloves on, so no big deal. Everything that I use that is epoxy is sticky, so always glove up when you are getting ready to work with it. Okay, at this point, we're just going to grab this and we're going to stir because you need to stir for about two minutes, okay? And I'm hoping I've been generous enough. This might be a little weak here. Ooh, we might have to double up that recipe, okay? That was not very generous. Yeah, I think I underestimated you guys. That is not going to be enough in here to do a whole tumbler, okay? So let's see what we're going to do here now because I really didn't want to get that other cup dirty, but we might. Um, we might have to do that, okay? And normally I never pour this way, but I don't know about making any more lines because <laughs> all my other lines were for a very big pour, okay? Okay, so we're going to be doing this not my favorite way, but we are going to mess up this cup. I'm afraid that's just not enough. And if it's not enough, we're not going to get our project finished. We sure don't want to run out of material in the middle of a pour. <laughs> that would not be good, okay? So I guess I'm just better off making up way too much than trying to be frugal and not have enough, okay? And getting, this is why I don't like using two containers, okay? Because there is just no way in heck I'm gonna get every last drop out of here, especially with the way the cups are made and um, it's just not gonna happen. So we're probably gonna be slightly off on our measuring. Okay, we know we just go for part A. Okay, even the best of us can screw things up, you guys, so don't worry. But look how easy, okay? It's not like all is lost. It's not like I've totally screwed this project up yet. We're just having to improvise a little bit more and realize that that was just not enough product. Okay, the one thing that I've always kind of done for myself when I've been trying to figure out if I'm staying even, this is kind of like my... Um, catch-all, okay, that I can tell. I've been pretty good. Those bottles are pretty darn even, okay? 
so I have been measuring pretty well, and that's kind of like your tell of tell to come back and show uh, as far as proof that you have been measuring well, you have been taking your time as both of the jars are at equal amount, okay? Hello, Courtney. Okay, so guys, I might not be answering questions here for a couple of minutes because you can tell I am gooped up, okay, which means my gloves are covered in epoxy, and there is no way, no way possible I am touching my laptop, okay? That is a, still a brand new Mac, far as I'm concerned. I don't care how old my Mac is. It's brand new to me, <laughs> but I am not touching my Mac computer with these hands, so um, as long as um, I can only see the bottom comment, okay? So if I've missed something, I'll scroll back as soon as I have. Um, clean hands, or uh, I was just say when I unglove, okay? Okay, so let's see now. Okay, now I feel I have plenty. Okay, so now we're back to the stirring trick of stirring for approximately two minutes, okay? As you stir, you want to scrape your sides, you want to scrape the bottom, you want to make sure that part A and part B are being completely, completely mixed together well, okay? And hey, for anybody that hasn't done it yet, if you guys don't mind, hit your sprinkle button for us and share this video with all your friends and family. We would love that. Um, and I promise you, I'll get back to any questions. So every epoxy that I'm aware of is a two-part. It doesn't matter what the brand is. The brand that I'm working with right now, uh, I think I got the little jar here. or the, that, This is our little tiny one. This is an eight ounce uh, kit, meaning there's, I believe, four ounces of each, so a total of eight ounces. So that would definitely do a few tumblers for you and some trivets and coasters and all kinds of fun little projects. Um, but it comes in the eight ounce, I think a 16 and a 32, um, depending on what all you're doing. And make sure you just really get a good little arm workout, guys, okay? and stir 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 now for just the fun of it uh, just because I can never leave things alone we're gonna put something in here called diamond dust and diamond dust is just a super super fine fine glitter okay it's not as fine as a mica powder but it's definitely not chunky as a glitter and a little bit goes a long, long way. So I'm gonna have this jar probably forever, <laughs> which is great. I'm never gonna run out. And I'm just gonna blend that in, okay? So which is gonna make my epoxy um, have a little bit of a shimmer to it, okay? So I'm adding a more bling, okay? I can't just leave things alone. We've already have our foil on here, we have glitter on here, and we're just gonna add a little bit more glitter. Now, this cup is done. Just let it sit, and um, you're basically just gonna have to throw that away. Okay, there's nothing I can do to revive that. Um, and they're not that expensive, but I know that they're way more expensive than just using my little white, like Dixie, oh, these aren't Dixie, but there's just plastic cups. This is just a cheaper way to mix up your epoxies than using the ones that come that are all pre-marked, okay? And, okay, last but not least, let's go ahead and plug in. We have to unplug something. And plug in our cup turner. And let's turn this little baby on and get it into position here. Now, because I am Probably not the neatest person in the world, but also epoxy can drip. <laughs> we are going to just take a little bit of press and seal, put it underneath. So if we do drip, it's dripping right there, okay? Um, this is the cobalt blue, the Americana stripes, and our silver glitter is what has been used on the whole project. Um, and I'm going to get this going and then I can take my gloves off, okay? So I'm just a hands-on kind of girl, which means I'm dipping my hands into that epoxy and I'm just going to rub it onto the surface as it goes around. Now, because I put clean uh, piece of press and seal down, if anything drips, I can also take it right off and pick it up and put it onto the cup, okay? So I'm just kind of working it around 
making sure that we have 100% coverage on here. As it spans, it's going to level. Make sure you don't forget to do the bottom. And we're hoping that we mixed enough that we're going to have plenty for our cup, but also we'll get that one uh, little trivet down as well, okay? So I kind of let it spin at this point and see where it is that we need more product, okay? Just making sure that it's everywhere. So I'm just going to kind of go back and forth. You know, this is really fun, you guys. <laughs> if you're one of those kids that like to make mud pies and just play and finger paint, there's nothing to be scared about, okay? It's just a coat of epoxy. That's all it is, okay? And the turner's doing most of the work for you, okay? I need to buy a couple more of these so I can get these done. But you do have to put more than one coat on here. There's no way you are going to just do the one layer. So this will have to spin. Okay, let's get, let's get my fingers cleaned off here. And let's grab us a couple more. I need to get my little triangles so we can use up our epoxy really quick, get that poured on the other project. And then I'll pull out my blowtorch <laughs> because epoxy is just not epoxy without a good old blowtorch, okay? And explain what we're doing with that as well. Let's get that stick out of the way, okay? There we go. Okay, so I'm going to pour the rest onto here. Okay, these are the little painter triangles that I use all the time to keep your projects up so that your epoxy can drip over. And we should have enough to hopefully get this last little project done. And just smear it over the top. Get your top surface. I always get my top surface done first. And then once I have the top covered, that is when I'll go ahead and pull it over to the sides and finish everything else out, okay? So there's nothing really to be scared about, okay? You do not have to have a big blowtorch like me. You can actually use your kitchen torch, okay? And I'll show you guys how to use that here in just a second. Um, you, okay, so Terry's saying you have to have a blowtorch. Well, I'm going to tell you, Terry, the blowtorch is what pulls the bubbles up, okay? So right now, this looks clear, okay? But when you see how it looks after I blowtorch it, it clears it out. It's bringing all the bubbles to the surface and making sure that um, there are no bubbles sitting in, which sometimes will cause divots and just it won't be as clear. And if I see a divot, that's when I'll like pounce like I'm doing right now. If I see a divot on um, the tumbler, I can pounce on that as well with just my fingers, okay? and just make sure that it's leveling. So the cup turning just continues to rotate and uh, levels the epoxy, okay, for the, for the evening. Here, I just put it on the sides and just make sure, because it's just going to drip, okay? It's going to drip to the back, and that's no big deal. When it's completely dry, I just sand all that off. Okay, so we're pretty much, I think, done. I got to off. I got to unglove on that one, okay? And I'm going to re-glove just because I know my blowtorch is sticky as well. But yeah, just even a cheap little kitchen blowtorch will work. Um, you don't have to go full bore like I have. Okay, I have big blowtorch because I mainly have done larger projects um, over the past years, not so much little stuff. So yes, it is a full-size blowtorch. Okay, uh, let's see. I think I got... Let's move this up a little bit so that you can see, okay. I like to keep the blowtorch approximately 8 to 10 inches away so you're not getting super close. Just go and fire that baby up, okay, and you're just going to put her over the top, okay. Okay, that's all you do, but it has brought the bubbles to the surface and it has completely cleared that out. I mean, it looks way more amazing. It looked white and hazy before. Okay. So we're going to do the same thing on the cup.
and it just clears it out. Okay. So I've always, always had, um, yeah, the torch is just the quickest. <laughs> now we can also use a heat gun, but a heat gun moves your epoxy. So be very careful with a heat gun. A heat gun is a total different purpose for working with epoxy. It's moving it. It's when I've got color in it and I'm moving it and uh, doing artistic application with it. But when I'm just trying to do a simple epoxy pour, whether I have the diamond dust in it or not, if you do not hit it with um, your blowtorch, you are gonna have some kind of a white hazing. Okay, I feel like I either have a lot of diamond dust down there or, um, or some hazing still. Okay, I'm just kind of pouncing on it. It's gonna level back out. I don't have to freak out, okay? But sometimes it's better to maybe let that spin. Now, when you heat it up, you're making it more uh, liquid so you don't want to heat it up too much. That's why I'm letting it spin again and cool off before I maybe hit this area just to see if I still have some bubbles at the end. Um, this looks pretty good here. Oh, that looks absolutely gorgeous. Okay, yes. Yeah, so if you guys haven't made any of these yet, you need to make some. And truly, this will spin for the night. Okay, I just leave it on the cup turner overnight, come in in the morning, turn it off. And the best thing to do is go ahead and just do a clear coat at that point. I won't put any... Uh, diamond dust in it. I won't put anything else, but I'm going to put a second coat on. Your epoxies need to be built up to give the most durability. It's not like this is going to go through the dishwasher, but you are going to use it as a tumbler. You're going to hand wash it. You're going to drink out of it and enjoy all your beverage, beverages that you need several coats, okay? okay? I'm going to hit it one more time. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay. No more blowtorch. Um, let's put that someplace safe. I actually s dropped one of those about a week or so ago, and that was kind of scary, okay? <laughs> I was afraid I was going to blow this place up. Um, but do me a big favor, okay? When you guys are working with any of these products, I want you to make sure you safety first, okay? I'm in a huge warehouse. We have doors open. We have air gumming through here. Um, I've got less than probably an ounce of epoxy mixed up. I know I'm okay. I'm gloved up. I don't have a reaction to the stuff. I'm not allergic to it. Some people are. So be very careful. Okay. Um, I encourage people if they've never worked with it, glove up, make sure you got long sleeves on and a well ventilated area. Okay. And your mask. Okay. So wear your mask. Okay. So um, yes, you could use a little cream brulee torch. It's easy. Okay. Uh, the torching is quick. You're just bringing those bubbles to the surface. Uh, I want to say almost everybody has a kitchen one, okay? Um, let's see. Uh, I don't believe a, just a lighter is going to work, okay? A blowtorch is like really heating it up and fast. And I mean, we don't have, I don't know if a lighter is going to do it, okay? You could search and see if you can find anything on that. But I'm going to say just a simple creme brulee. Um, little uh, torch is going to be great for you to do your projects, okay? Um, yeah, heat gun's not going to work, definitely, Terry. Heat gun's co completely for a different purpose when it comes to our epoxies. Uh, let's see, yes, just the, little, the littlest torch, okay? Not a heat gun. You do not want a heat gun at this point. I have not shown you what you do with a heat gun, okay? Heat gun is completely a different application. So make sure um, that a heat gun is for moving, moving color, okay? Not for what we just did. Um, yes, yes, Michelle, yeah. For, for just clearing the epoxy and bringing all the air bubbles to the surface is just a blowtorch. A heat gun is completely a different purpose. And um, we, sh I mean, I show all those details in my painting group when we get into some incredible types of different finishes. Um, but it really is for moving color. So when it's, it's when you're tinting your uh, epoxy and you're bringing other colors in and you're trying to make those colors blend and move, heat gun is the uh, tool for that application, definitely. Okay, guys, I think we've made progress, okay? Uh, Tumblr is on its way to being finished. Uh, a lot of projects have been glued together, okay? 
and even a few things we've got some uh, rope on them and twine uh, so again the hiccup got to find the correct staples so we can finish these projects okay who knows maybe we'll do some work over the weekend i'm getting there okay slowly i'm getting there <laughs> but uh i think i have answered everything if you guys asked something earlier and i missed it i promise i'll come back and check through these uh messages and comments over the weekend I hope that everybody has a great weekend and it sounds like it's time for me even to start. So um, there's a little, I'm, I'm sure I'll be around this weekend. So you probably see me live once or twice. We'll see. I never get as much done as I thought I was going to do this week, but only coming back on Wednesday. Hmm. Yeah, I took a little bit of extra time off. So I only worked two and a half days this week. And it seems like I only work two and a half days. So we've got a lot more stuff to get done. So you guys have a great weekend. Reach out if there's anything I can help you with. And hey, happy foiling, okay? Bye, guys.